broke, broke, girl, girl, girl therapy. Girl, 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 girl. Yeah, let's just like breathe, Miss yeah. Jessica Clark, MBA. Let's breathe. Let's take a moment. <clears throat> Cause this is a lot. It's a lot. You okay, friend. Yeah, I just hate when there's like technical difficulties, yeah. and like, and I have to like sit and and then like get into character, you know. No, I, I get it. <laughs> Now that I do, like, red carpets and stuff like that, when you're, literally, you can see me switch and be like, okay, hi, yeah, because yeah. so, you have to be the energy for the, especially with dealing with influencers or celebrities, they give you, did you do a cut crease on your eye? What do you mean? Your makeup, your eye I, makeup. I feel like I do a cut you crease sometimes. You did a sometimes. cut crease. Yeah, I do. Yes. I, I do doing cut creases here and there. I live for the cut crease. You're like, bitch, I you do a cut crease and you're distracted. Okay. I know. I was like, wait, is there like a bug on my face? You no. looked at me like I was crazy. It's, it's giving me cute. <laughs> it's giving me cute. But yeah, I was just saying like, you have to, you have to. The, you, the energy you give off is the energy like the person you're interviewing or you're talking with. A thousand percent. And so that automatically, that is like a battery sucker. Whew, so I definitely, the fact that you've been doing this for as many years as you have, I definitely have a new respect for what you do 100%. Thank you. Yeah, because it's like having to sit here, be on point, yes. look at the cameras, make sure it's good, audio's going. Good. Girl, yes. And then, and then like, well, I'm realizing the you. alignment between what you do and I do yeah, because I mean, content creating is the same it, thing. It's, it's like, and you're yeah. worried about, especially if I like I'm videoing someone, and I'm worried like what, well, like the sound doesn't work. So because I've taken out the you know the little amp the thing, and it's like there's no sound, and I'm like, Dang. and like you can't get that moment back because no, they're yeah. gone. You know exactly. So, so like making sure everything everything's is on point. On. Yeah, like, and recording and 100%. good. Hundred percent. Because I've been there so many times where like a memory runs out, yeah. like. An audio didn't work, uh, whatever it is. It's just like there's, I've been through it all. Uh, yeah. New Ooh. respect for you, my girl. New respect. Thank you. And like, honestly, like, I respect all content creators because it's fucking hard. <laughs> like, and all across the board, like, it's it's really hard. Just so. creators in general, just trying to get things together. It's it's a lot, but at the it's same fun. time, we wouldn't, rather, we wouldn't, want to do anything else exactly you know? there's so. like a sense of adrenaline that happens uh, oh a hundred percent like and it's not until after you're like <gasps> oh that was a lot that was a lot <laughs> and that was good and you, you know and you get like and you get entertained yeah and then other and people you watch get it back and you're like oh wow that was really good like, that was funny yeah. yeah anyways let's introduce ourselves hi Hey guys, it's me Stephanie Megan you're a oh, broco therapy and I have the newly Beautiful. I mean, you've always been beautiful. That was what we were saying. <laughs> we got Jessica motherfucking Clark, MBA, badass <laughs> bitch. <laughs> like, you just graduated. We had your graduation party yes, yesterday. Thank you so much for coming, Of friend. course. I, like, arranged this, like, because, you know, I come to L.A. to do, rec- yeah. like, batches of episodes. I, like, arranged it to make sure that, like, I came. She's such a good at friend. At the same time. Like, a good, committed friend. Because, honestly, I still have a month of episodes I haven't put out yet. So I came like, so like a you're, month early. You're ahead of the schedule. I'm, I'm ahead of schedule, so I'm like, it's fine. But still, it's like, you know, whatever. But I love that. yeah, and then I'm hungry, so my food's probably going to be here soon. We have, uh, okay, first off, what's new with you? Because we always, we need like an update with your life because it changes every <laughs> time I come back. So we like, we need to keep the updates going. Oh, well, I mean, I, as you said, I just graduated. That was a huge milestone um, because I sucked in undergrad. Like, I barely made through undergrad, yeah. like 2.0, barely made through. And I just got any degree that I could just because I was like, whatever. Like, I have to just graduate. I, yeah, I didn't want to pay any more money. I just yeah. And all my friends were leaving. I was like, I have to walk. I have to do something. So I, I finished that. Um, what was your undergrad? On? It was, in, well, I got, this is how random my undergrad was. So I got a, um, my bachelor's in uh, interdisciplinary studies. And it, the concentration was um, public relations and business. Okay, that's not um, random. I feel like if 
you could still use it with what you're doing. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. So I got that. But interdisciplinary studies. What is, is a disciplinary? Like, what is interdisciplinary that? studies? Mean like just more more than one study at once. So oh. you know, how people just do business or just do you know. Oh, I it's see. just like you're studying multiple things, which is honestly is also a good degree to have because it's very much in alignment with me. I'm not, I'm not just one thing. Like I'm not just good at. Um, content or I'm not just good at business or I'm not just good at finance I'm I'm I I'm good at a lot of things and that's yeah. what I'd say like I'm not the best at one thing I'm but I'm good at a lot of things yeah so I kind of is in the line with what I'm you know who I am but then with my 2.0 GPA I couldn't get into an MBA program because no one would take me they're like girl you suck right, like, <laughs> if you choose? suck that what makes you think right but then i had like work experience and everything like that and i really like hustled yeah sorry <laughs> i uh, really hustled to get into a program i had to do a lot i had to prove myself essentially before i got accepted into a program take like yeah. classes extra more classes after and then got into a program and i finished the program with a 3.95 I think GPA you were killing it. I remember like living together and you'd be like s- studying and like writing a paper while like also having to work full time yeah, and I, I was full-time. like I'm stressed just working full time <laughs> like like let alone and then you know and but I guess it's like having the podcast it kind of is like the oh, same 100%. thing you know it's you like that to. extra thing but still I mean for me school I'm just like I look at school as like such a scary thing it but, is it really is yeah. and it's because because it's a it's a deter- it's one of those things where it's either you pass or you fail and it's there's no like in between right and because of and but i feel like in the creative industry there is like it's almost it's depends like you can see something i make i'm like yo it sucks but someone else can see it. i'm like it's, it's like subjective yeah, yeah it's subjective like creative creativity exactly subjective, and yeah. but school is just not yeah and i feel like that's what the scary part is but yeah girl i'm done so what now done. Well, I work. I'm still working yeah. full time, and I. This is kind of a new industry for me. My job now as a content creator. Um, and so always I, on the red carpet. If y'all follow always Jess, on the red she's <laughs> always on the red carpet, and I'm like, I love this for you. Yeah. So I'm doing a lot of like um, press junkets, red carpet interviews, um, and. We're really, they're really leaning into that. Uh, festivals. Yeah. I'm going to be going to. I just can't, literally, I was. I'm insane, honestly, because on Monday, the money that just went, um, I was in New York. I was in New York for 24 hours. Yeah, I saw that. Like three days before my graduation, working. Yeah, and then I flew back. And then that's why everything has just been so crazy, because I've just been back back to back to back to back to back to back. I feel like you've been back to back to back to back for like a minute. Yeah, for many years. And I'm ready to slow down, to be honest. Yeah, and like as someone who preaches a soft life, I'm like... I choose to make hard decisions. (laughs) Yeah. Right. But I think besides work, I really want to invest in my love life. Um, It's time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's time. I really want to invest in my love life. Because for a while you were like... I mean, you were still like putting yourself out there, but you're always like, I still got like school and work. Yeah, it and, like, wasn't a it's focus. So it wasn't hard. a priority yeah. for me at all. Like, it was something I would love if it came naturally. But, yeah. And I, obviously, I've got on hinge and stuff, but I just didn't have the capacity or time to really, truly invest in it. Um, right. But now I'm ready, you know? So Kyle's out of the picture because everyone knows Kyle, <laughs> you know? So we got to like. Kyle is kind of out of the picture for now. Like, we had a kind of an argument. Over what? We we have this th- we have this miscommunication thing. And you I know. kind of had, yeah, <laughs> this huge, exactly, miscommunicated thing. And I kind of was just like, I had it. And yeah. I was kind of like talking to someone that was just serious, um, who was more, he was older. Is that he the was, one that was there yesterday? Yes. Um, I know he came to me. He's like, I'm, I'm the guy. I was like. And it's so funny because it's like, he's, Hi, it's guy. so funny because he acts like he doesn't want to be uh, have the attention, but, but then, then he positions himself to you know right. And I'm like, oh yeah, nice to meet you. And today I, he like texted me. He was like, did anyone say anything about me? I was like, no, not really. <laughs> I feel like he was disappointed. Really? Yeah. No, I think tell him that Steph <laughs> thinks he's really great. Yeah, everyone likes him. Yeah, but, and like, like he's really friendly. He's easy to talk to. Yeah. He's like really smart and i think he's great like, yeah. i gotta get any like red flags no, you know I, yeah he's very even keel <laughs> um very much 
I will say you always go for guys who are like at least like in comparison to like him and Kyle, they have this like goofiness about yeah. them. Like they never like you can't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, they can't, they're never like which is great. Yeah. I love that. Like they they don't like really take themselves too seriously. Like they're just very like they're very fun. Yeah. You know, but like but still like focused guys. Like they're not like losers. Exactly. You know what I mean? And Kyle is um work like, he's really getting himself together. Proud of we talk here and there. I haven't yeah. seen him in a very long time. Which is unusual for us, but um, yeah, because you guys were like we saw each other a lot, yeah. But talk, I mean, you slept on the phone together, like yeah. you, you said. It, well, you said on the Patreon <laughs> one, did. yeah. Yeah, we 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 were very we we are, but, but then I had to with him. I knew that I couldn't get into something new without really letting go, distancing yeah. myself from him. Because I know the moment I see him again, I'm going to be like. <gasps> You know, because there's like there is like a really good connection between there you guys. Is. It's but sometimes like the realities of life, exactly, just like just doesn't make sense. Like, exactly, kind of like how it was with like Morgan, even though it's a little bit more toxic. But like it was just like the connection and like the chemistry was there, but right. the realities of life was just like it's just not. Uh, if it's not, na- yeah, it's yeah. Just yeah. Not if now. it's not now, maybe It'll maybe be, down maybe. the line. If it's like something like that's you know yeah. there, whoever you know. But, but, yeah, it was just I had to really distance myself because he was – it was one of those situations where, you know, when you kind of want to have someone in your life, um, but there is someone – like, a, I want someone, like, significant in my life. But I think w- in the place I was, like, busy with school, with work, yeah. Kyle kind of fulfilled those – parts that I needed like the love or you know the The attraction the attention so he fulfilled those things on like just being my friend and so I wasn't and that was at the time enough to keep me through that you know right yeah that was enough to keep me like through through it all so yeah I had to kind of let go yeah well good for you and like I'm sure like Whatever happens, happens, and I have to sneeze. By the way, I should have said this earlier. We're in. This is not the blue wall. This is Rose's garage. So my allergies might be acting up, but like, what a vibe! I feel like I'm in a disco, right? Like yeah. I feel like this is like that '70s show. Hi, Rose, I miss you. I miss you, I'm Rose. Very proud of you. Yes, she. I'm so grateful. She's like let me stay here in this garage. Not in the gear, sorry. I'm like I'm sleeping in her house, but she has a garage. She's letting me record and like sleep in her place, like while she's gone. That's so dope. And like because like that's what friends it's are for. for. And like I wasn't even like asking to like sleep over. I was just like, can I just use your garage to like record? You know? She's like, well, do you need a place to stay? And I was like, actually, yeah, that would be amazing. So yeah. I'm like very grateful because like I mean, you know. Do we get into it? Do not get into it? But Honestly, like, it's up to you. This is your show, and I will be candid. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, let's let's be I very won't be candid. Sorry. We'll we'll be candid safely. Yeah. Um, with without any disrespect, just of like course. being very truthful. And I don't even know that I was gonna go here, but I, I just feel like talking about it. Okay. But like, yeah, it's just you know the apartment we got evicted. <laughs> Here you say that out loud is wild, dog. Like my name under it, even though I didn't live there. Yeah. Um, and people kind of know like the Vincent portion. Yeah. But they don't know like the other half, and I don't even want to like say any names. If you know, you know. But I'm not trying to like. I'm also trying not to like spread hate. I think that like. I think it, all in all, the conclusion of it is we did get evicted. It wasn't our fault. Um, however, we're doing our best to pivot and move forward the third yeah and we wish everyone the best we wish communication was better we wish a lot of things were better um and it's actually a very unfortunate situation because that place was almost like a generational house yeah <laughs> um there, and, yeah and, and we had many special moments there with the pod with our friendship um and so i think we were both just emotionally attached to that house yeah um, and so yeah it's just unfortunate but we're doing our best to move forward with we're so the cards we've been dealt. like media trained <laughs> 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 no but i know but that's truly like how you feel so like the third party in the situation 
definitely like put us in a situation, especially me because my name is on yeah. it. So it looks bad for my record, even though I've always been someone to pay my rent on time. Mm-hmm. And so to be in a situation. She pays her rent before time. Yeah. Like I pay my rent on the 27th the month before. Like it's. She, yeah. If, she, she's on. on it's, it. If it hits my account, I'm like, I'm, I directly go and I will pay say, my rent. I think one lesson out of this for Steph and Steph, and it's just crazy to even say this, but like. One thing we love about you is your faith in people and she has the capacity to give people multiple chances and and she believes in people. She Thousands genuinely believes in people and doesn't hold um, your past or like she would just be like, okay, we're in the moment now. I know what you've done in the past, but I believe in you. And not only just I'm going to believe in you and step back, but I'm going to believe in you again and invest in you again and trust you again. And, and help you. Th- and help you. And I feel like that is such an amazing quality because so many people, are, especially in LA, so many people are just not quick to like help. But you are so open to that. Um, unfortunately, the bad side of, not even bad, but the unfortunate side of that is sometimes it takes, I've taken people take advantage of that um, exactly and i feel like i definitely have <laughs> taken advantage of like the past couple years yeah. like crazy to the point where it's like it's now my name in it you know yeah. and like i've had to pay people's debt and i've had to take the take the blame for people's like the debt is now under my name right. type of thing and like I, it, like if i i just it it's so much more complicated, like, because people be like, why did you put in your name? You should have done this. And there are so many steps I, like, really should have taken, you know? Well, we just didn't think it would get. It just It's because did. it we, wasn't, like, if it was a random person, of course, we would have been more, like, yeah, we need to, because we don't right. know. Right. But, you know, we, these are people that we know, so. Exactly, and like, damn near your best friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, damn near, like, my homie, like, for life. And it's just crazy how people can, um. I would say more so Vincent. <laughs> yeah, I think Vincent is more so because at least, you know, the third other third par- person party, whatever, like they've apologized. They've showed remorse. They've showed remorse. They've showed like guilt. And although it, it doesn't really like it doesn't make me, it doesn't solve the problem and make me forgive them 100% at the moment, but at least like. It helps to show, like, it shows character it does. A, a little bit. So it shows an aspect of it, character, for right? Sure. Aspect of character, and I mean, definitely, there's a lot of flaws in the character, yeah. but it's. But Vincent, I think, like, hurt me the most in the situation yeah. because not only did he not pay his rent for months, I barely paid, it. And, it, yeah, and then, but then, like, to leave and to like, and to leave, put the debt on my hands, and never once ever took accountability and said sorry yeah and then even when the lawyers came after us for the money like he like when we got served fucking papers like we he did not once like respond even though it was him that would like that made that got us into this fucking situation you know And he not he did not respond. He you know like ignored my messages, b- blocked me on social media, blocked my calls, everything. I mean, at one point I had I did like put him on my story because I think I was like she sure did. I, I was like uh-huh. it was like the it was like and trust me I should have done it sooner, yeah. but I like what and I should or maybe shouldn't even done it. I never even planned to have done that because I didn't want to put like our shit out there like that but i was like you fucked me over right like like you scammed me like vincent fucking scammed me and so not vincent the scammer child. <laughs> so i i don't even know where we get here but i'm here I'm and lying. i just feel good about talking about this and so it like you, you know what i mean like and it's also like you claim to be like one of my best the friends, friends. And he did your hair, photo shoots. He was there. Like, he was there. He was so supportive with BGT. Like, we've been friends for, like, 10 years. And the most insane thing is, if he just spoke to you, and just you said, guys would have been able to come to to do something. something. Even if he, Especially if how forgiving said, I am. Hey, listen, I'm not going to pay anything. I'm not, but 
this is what the situation is or hey this is my situation this is what i'm going through right now how exactly. can we work through something that to me is he, better than but he ghosting. never took a yeah he goes to me never took accountability because also like the property manager was willing to do some sort of payment plan and like he couldn't even do that like he he completely neglected the situation and put his problems my problems yeah even after like living there. Yeah. And so and I've said this on the pod before that like, you know, all, everyone who bought merch, the first live shows and candles and everything like that. And I'm so sorry the letters fell off. I learned to not do certain things. But all of that went to like paying off his debt, you know. And so, but. You know, I, it was it was just, there's so many layers and so like many layers. So, and many, so many layers and so many lessons, so many layers and so many lessons. And it was just like, you know, the biggest thing that really like what? I think about and I cringe because I'm like, what were we thinking? The, what the deposit? The deposit when you came the in, deposit he, and the TV. We should have kept that TV. Everything we should we should have kept a motherfucker everything hostage because he hostage. we <laughs> like who we. Again, still was having faith in him, even though he was like in debt with us. And we like, should have been like, "Hey, we're gonna use this debt towards rent," instead of saying, "Hey, let me sell you." Let me sell you the deposit. And I thought, and I thought again that he would be like, "Okay, let me let me just pay this." The uh, moment amount. he didn't say to us, "Just put it towards rent," is the debt is the moment we should have been like, ah. "Actually, never mind." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and then he didn't, of course. And then he had the audacity to come back and get his TV, nice ass TV. And I like, I don't know. So, anyways, I should have kept. We should have kept that a thousand whatever something dollar yeah. hostage in the TV. It, what? I, so there was a lot of lessons, and like even after that, still tried to like have faith that he will like try to figure it out. But no, he didn't. So, and I don't even care about saying his name and saying it out loud because it's like tr the truth what is he gonna right. do so yeah so that's why we're here in rose's garage <laughs> no, um, that is why that's a good, good that was a good explanation that, yeah, yeah. That good <laughs> that's really because it's like i feel like i like to be like obviously as authentic as possible right. like so just to like keep it really clear and also just want to document the moment too i think like looking back and being like that's where we were in, in our lives and like because I obviously do plan to grow and all that. And, like, I really, like, so right now it's really, like, just such a it transitional point. Well, yeah. I, I think every time I come out here, I mean, it, it just it might be different. I might be just recording in different places. So the set may look different. But I will do whatever it takes to, like, make content. You know, if yeah. it's just, like, we're in a garage, garage. you know, with, like, just roses – decorations like you know we'll make it work so we love it. but uh one day like the dream is to like have a studio and like uh, and it will happen very soon it'll happen i just have to like keep going and if you guys want to support and hopefully you know i could get a studio sign up for patreon like stuff like that really like, really helps Help. yeah. um and like plus with that you get like bonus content like for instance like we had an episode. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I would not run. I would walk. I mean, I would not walk. I would run to Patreon, sign up because, let me, okay, this is the real, 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 real tea. Me and Kyle recorded an episode and we did not, have we said this before? Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. yeah. And we didn't want to, like, release it. And that episode is now on Patreon. Yeah, and it was like, because the first time Kyle was on, if you guys caught, there was like a little vibe where I kept making things awkward. I'm like, why are you guys kissing? How long have you guys been dating? And they just <laughs> kept like avoiding the conversation. And so I was like, all right, fine, whatever. But the second, it was so funny. It was I was watching back and editing that episode. Like you could see like we were like not trying to record a second episode, but Kyle turned exactly. off the camera, hit record, hit record on my laptop. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down like, oh, are we recording? He's like, yeah, you know? And so I was like, okay. Yeah, and then, <laughs> so it was just like, so like unplanned and just, it. I would say out of all my episodes that I've recorded since being on the pod, that was, that was the best. That was my, the most real authentic, like no filter, Jessica. That's the, 
the most no filter Jessica you will get on camera ever. Yeah. Um, so pretty and much so, it was like a situation. Sh- I was pretty much a situation ship therapist, which I she realized, was, and she's really good. Which I realized I want to do that. Like, I, I think as you, a career. Honestly, or and you know what's so funny? Actually, I've always said when I'm older, like close to retiring age, I want my like a hustle to be to be like a therapist or so psycho like a therapist. Yeah, like, like helping couples, people. Yeah, helping people. Yeah, I think like I mean I don't I don't think I'm like experienced enough to like do a, like a marriage or like even a, like a long term relationship. Fact, you would I want situ- to I, I want to do a situation shit. I want to do the ones that like are just <laughs> if you are got so mess scared, come to step. <laughs> you got mess come to me. Like I want to do I want to do those type of like relationships where it's like you're dating and you it's can't figure it out. Stuff. Like I mean I as in there, TV. Not, okay. Yeah. That TV. too. I mean, that's the goal one day. But yeah, so that, that's what I want to do. Yeah, but anyways, so that yeah. episode is up. Please do not. And a lot of y'all, little, little, little people, be sending these videos. I just see Wait, shit. What? I just see shares on Instagram of videos of me. I'm like, who is sharing these? <laughs> because, and I feel like it's, uh, <laughs> you know, the end. MFs. Right, it's okay. People it's like fine. get invested. Honestly, it's my truth. And I'm an adult. It wasn't honestly like looking back, I'm like, you guys are dramatic. It wasn't even that bad. Like you guys were just <laughs> you were like it was the most relatable like situation. It wasn't like you guys were like spilling each other's tea. You were just being honest about why yeah. you couldn't commit. And I felt like a lot of what was being said and what you guys were going through was very relatable. literally like the most like common situation yeah. like ever. So like, yeah, I think it was. It, it, I think it was just great to like see you guys like. And honestly, the truth is, I didn't want to out because I think if I didn't want to out on, without y'all niggas paying for it, <laughs> one because that will help my friend step. But I didn't want it out for free because, um, I feel like that episode would kind of haunt you or something. Not haunt me, but with other men, I think people will see that see that and be like eh. and uh, me, me and Kyle have already s- said I like, would think so me and Kyle have already said like if we want like us getting married to other people I don't think any uh, either of our partners will want us to be as close as we were you actually be surprised I mean I think any healthy relationship should know that like you have a past but I feel like it would still be very because and here's the thing Whenever um, Kyle and I are in the same room, in the same space, people, even if we're not flirting or anything, people will be like, what is going on with you? There's like that. It's a palpable. Right. So that's why also I've been keeping, keeping my distance. I'm hoping that the distance will help it like kind of fade out a little bit. You know? I think if you look back, you would. I don't think it would affect. I think it like makes you. And actually, both of you guys look like great in yeah. the situation like it doesn't make you guys like no one's the bad guy no no it's not even scary. it's just so it's much. just like a very it's like if like again like whoever you end up with probably was in the same situation yeah too. do you know what i mean yeah so it's like it wasn't he's a you part he was, about your he was a part of my life or anything like that <laughs> like it was just someone you had a moment with yeah. which is like fair i mean you're a grown woman you're beautiful like you you're gonna have experience like and now that i have, I have my know. masters i'm not, you have your I'm masters, not gonna be moving the same like, let's just say something that. like that episode if they like run away because of that i'm like they're probably really fucking lame because i think <laughs> all of the things about you are so much more bigger than just what was said yeah in that episode that's so and how you're represented if you ever feel like it was represented a certain way in that episode no, you know I what i mean fine. i think we'll so. be fine I know. I think Everything you guys. I think, okay. I think you guys. It was just so vulnerable for you guys was. in that moment yeah. that it was like you didn't want your shit out there. Yeah. Like, I get that, but just like letting you know. Yeah. Look, I found someone who. I'm really so happy. You know what I mean? Like so I've happy. been talking about all my scandals and like people I've hooked up on the show. And he's listened and he still loved me. Brian you know is I mean? different though. The, honestly, I mean, you're you're like worth finding someone who's gonna like respect that no 100 percent. brian is but that's why i mean brian work of course yeah brother like, b is he's a different kind of he's i love him so much for you i, I love he's you guys just like the best human the best i love him so much Aww. brother b shout out to you brother b <laughs> <Love> <laughs> okay so uh we have someone on patreon who like sent in a question okay. and i'm 
like they like commented on a video and like I'm also like not the best not that I'm not the best writer I rather like talk about like I rather give advice vocally yeah and obviously that's why I'm a podcast than to like write it out yeah so if you guys like if you are on Patreon and you send me questions like I'm gonna prioritize uh those over the other emails which I'll obviously get to the other emails but I want to answer this person first I felt like you were like the right person to do it so let me pull it up so I'm like trying to know my way around here do 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 elevator music do 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 we're recording on the podcast we're okay. gonna answer your questions so in the questions so her name is is it Zoe or Zoe is it Zoe they want to go by Zoe or Zoe sounds like Zoe Zoe, right? If it's if I'm wrong, just Zoe, let me know. Zoe, Zoe. Um, she's like, Steph and Quay are back at it again because it was under Quay's episode. L O L. Awesome episode, and thank you both for sharing your time and space. I'm currently in a new relationship, about four months, and things moved so fast. I usually am very vocal about my boundaries and how I like to take things slow to let a relationship develop naturally. But ours was more like a mile marker towards full-blown monogamy. There were a few red flags I ignored, and the biggest one was he, boyfriend, went through my phone asking about who I was texting as if I was cheating on him, and we weren't even official. This was the second date. Oh, hell no. I mean, he made me dinner, but I feel like that was so disrespectful. The yeah, salmon was... wasn't that good. Ah, not salmon. <laughs> Every man makes salmon. That's like their go-to. It is. Brian loves making salmon. I do like his salmon, though. <laughs> um, I appreciate that you both support the idea of taking space for yourself and stuff. How you put it, choosing yourself for each other, something like that was great to hear. I know I need to take a break from this relationship, but I'm afraid it'll push them away forever. And sure, that could have been that could that could be the right thing it's just scary also we've had conversations on really heavy topics and i enjoy our time together but i'm also but i'm just coming to terms <clears throat> with my fear of intimacy and it's hard to figure out if i could be it, it could be fear that has me moving so fast any tips on how to really figure out your next moves and how to handle the fear of things not going as planned sorry for the long response lol we love you. We love you. Thank you, Zoe. Um, so what are your thoughts? First of all, him going through your phone on the second day is That's such a red flag. fucking weird. That's such a red flag for me because it's definitely showing trust issues. Yeah. Um, And it's not only showing trust issues, it's showing unresolved trust issues. Yes. And he's like, I feel like, I know there's people who like move fast and it ends up working just fine. Like Rachel and Ian. Very, very. That's such like, a it's rare. It's such a rare percentage. But when people move that fast and you could feel it, like she's even saying like full blown monogamy, like the second day doing right, all that stuff. Right. Like I think it's a really bad sign. And I feel like with Rachel and they were and Ian, they were so, both of them were on the same page. There was alignment. There was yeah. this, it was almost like a puzzle piece. It was like, this is just what it, what it's supposed to be. Right. But all your quest, your questions. When and also they were healed. I mean, yeah, they had their partners, but Rachel was like already working on herself. Exactly. Like, like has, has a lot of, like has healed a lot throughout the years. And typically when I, I find that when people are not healed and they go into relationships very fast um it can be a sense of trauma bonding um in that both of you are hurt or not going or go or both of you have shared it like she mentioned we will have some really deep conversations so there's yeah. some traumatic shared experiences that you're both able to bond over yeah. and that is where your connection stems from because he's able to identify the pain in you and vice versa and yeah. then that's where you're kind of and that's never Pain should not be the catalyst or the beginning of your relationship. 1000%. And it's like, yeah, I just, and if, you know, and I think she's also like mentioned, because I think I mentioned in that episode, one of, I think one of the episodes, I think in all the episodes I've mentioned this, that like me and, so when I first started dating Brian, he was like, as cancers do, they like, as soon as they know they're in love, they're like, they like latch on they latch on they're like you're the one this is it and it you know and it was like 
amazing because I've never felt like so chosen. But it's also like they say as Aquarius, we like need time, like we need space and we yeah. need like to take our time and be friends first and everything. And so I like broke. Remember, I, do you remember I broke up with him for uh, mm-hmm. in the beginning? Yeah. And <laughs> Rose's neighbor just walked by. Oh, wait, that's is that my food? Oh, yeah. over here. Is that Uber Eats? You, Hello. Hi. Hi, Uber Eats. Oh, yeah, yeah. You could come in here. I'm here. I broke up with Brian. Mm-hmm. And I told him, like, I just need to take things slow. Right. And uh, he matched that energy and did a really great job just, like, going with my pace and not trying to, like, force the situation to go quicker you know it was just like let's just like slow love i need yeah. slow love i need a slow build um i hate slow love and i mean it was he was like devastated like he acted like we like broke up but it was really like no i just, I just need to slow it down like yeah i was like i just need time alone for a second because also it was like right after morgan so i was like let me just like i need some alone time I need to, like, slow this. Because I also knew deep down that he was the one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But I just, like, I didn't like the feeling of rushing to that. I just, I mean, I think a little scared for sure. But I think it's just, like, it turned me off how quick he was. So I was, like, I just liked it at a slower pace. Yeah. I feel like. That's why in the past I've tend to like guys who like didn't want to commit because mm-hmm. they gave me space. Yeah. And I think that like I like that mm-hmm. even if it's unhealthy. Right. But, you know, he did it in a healthy way. Right. So I think if like, I mean, I think there's something like shady about you, about your guy because like the second date he should not be checking your phone. Yeah, that's weird. Um, so definitely uh, keep an eye out. That's just weird to me. But I just think that you definitely have to communicate and say that you need a slow pace and it doesn't, like, you're feeling like it's just rushing too quickly. Like and if just, he's the right one, he will understand. He'll understand. Just how Brian was like, okay, because Brian knew he wanted to be with me too. And although, like, he was really, really, like, fucking sad about it, thought it was the end of the world, like, he eventually saw that, like, oh, okay, like, she still wants to be around. She just, like, needs time she needs to do it her time. way she yeah her way. yeah and like you should try to like i think even fucking rachel's husband ian said like on the pod before too was like before when you would fight in a toxic relationship it was really like trying to defend yourself mm-hmm. versus like when you fight now in a relationship it's because you're fighting for each other right like as a team so it's just like try to work as a team and try to see what you know l- communicate what pace works for you right and then, like, just try to compromise on, like, what that looks like. For instance, like, for me and Brian, you know, he would stop calling me, but I I wanted to be the one to call. Yeah. So, like, I was able to choose, right, like, the timing were, right, of when right. we would, like, talk. And it sucks because sometimes he'd just, like, be waiting around. But, Aww. you know, I would, like, call. I mean, I was still call Like, I was calling, like, often, but it was, like, on my terms. terms yeah. And so he just, like, and respected it's that. It's beautiful that it gives you the space to do that because some people might be like, well, why is it her time? Why is it not my time? You know? Yeah. And then it's just... When you truly love someone, that is because that's such a surface, petty way of thinking about things. And so I'm saying, if this is what it makes her happy, if this is what makes her comfortable, I'm going to prioritize that over my ego. I feel like that's because really that's what is always rooted is an ego. It's just like, well, I matter too. Why does she get, you know? Right. um, Yeah. But it's like if they need space because they need to heal, they need to focus on whatever it is. And like, if you respect them as a person, like you'll give them that space. And I'm sorry. Well, also though, with space, I do when, well, I'm not in space with people that need to heal. I just leave them alone. I I, I don't think, people in I've, the healing stage I, at this age. Yeah, I'm I think so my sorry. healing stage was a little different. Yeah, though. your healing stage is different. I think yours was surface yeah. healing. Yeah, but I also was telling myself, too, like, you know, in in my situation, like, I knew that Brian was, like, an amazing guy that I was like, don't fuck this up. Yeah. Like, don't, you know, like, 
don't keep him thinking that there's a chance. Right. Like, don't go in and out and be like, okay, yes. I mean, no. Right, yes. Right, right. No. So Make I like all decisions. I, I definitely was like very intentional. Every time I spoke to him, I knew that like, it's because I want to talk to him. It's because I want to make this grow. Right. You know? And so like, I, tr- I really tried to tell myself, cause I, I, I've been like that in the past, like in, you know, like when I was younger and stuff, I'd be like in and out, especially with like my first boyfriend. Right. And like it just and then eventually he like left because he was like deuces like I don't like you keep where you're really indecisive and like I deserve better. You yeah. Know? Which is true. So like <laughs> just don't don't play those games. So if you are like I need space like don't do it in a sense of like either be in. If or, you, yeah. I'm just communicate. I think it's OK to say I need space, but just ghosting someone and assuming that they should know that you need space. That's just not that's not being considerate of the other person exactly you know, but just saying hey i need to slow down this is going too fast for me and what are ways that we can work together that you will feel comfortable and but also i equally will feel comfortable to make this yeah you know put some brakes on this fast process because yeah. nothing f- fast really lasts long typically in most situations if it happens fast in most cases it's not gonna there's no foundation there Um, yeah but of course there are some random chances like rachel um where things just work out differently but from what you've said in this message it ain't giving rachel and ian is giving yeah something else like he's already showing who he is just by from like the second second day is wild that's going through my phone on the second day you're not in a relationship on the fucking second day i don't even know you what's your last name yeah exactly sir like I, I, I know people like who have rushed into relationships, and then once they're already like in it, like in it, in it, like they're living together, and then they find something that's like, oh wait, this is really shady. You know what I mean? And that's what so it's like. That's why I'm like, just just take your time, yeah. man. Like, what's the rush? Right. Like, it just, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. And that's what I was. Um, even with moving in with a partner. Me and my best friend always have this discussion because on a Christian level, that's not something that we we do. Right. Um, even my brother did it. <laughs> right. But I'm the girl. But sometimes with this economy, girl. it's just like be making sense. Listen. Like, wait, I don't want to like live with anyone but else. But here's the <laughs> thing. Even, even aside from the money. Um, right. And I, I, did just, spe- I did speak to my mom about it because my mom's a pastor. But um, because I was telling her, well, I understand, you know, we're not supposed to have sex before marriage. I mean, that's her boat sailed. Um, but yeah. then just living with each other in itself, we, sh- we should be married. I was telling my mom, what if, like, there are things that happen um, that, you know, you, you naturally will learn the thing. You, there's things you can't learn unless you're living together. 1,000%. Oh, and 1, what are those things that you learn when you are living? Let's say you, get, you do get married, and then after you get married, let's say you move in together, and you're like, it, that gives you the ick um and, and I was it's like, just you, you and also just like when you argue living together the arguments are different living together than they are when you're like just yeah in a relationship you can go back to your house and he can equally go and back the to the space him. again on <laughs> the space but then when you're sleeping in the same bed on the same house it's just but my mom's response was well if you love each other and he's the one for you what difference will it make either whether you're together you'll fi- figure it out if right. you're not but then i was like uh, yeah but also no so i'm still again my brother moved in but my brother's more of he's definitely walks to the marches to the beat of his own drum right. i'm more of the traditional you know I, yeah. I really care what my parents think what their opinion like for small things to this day i'm 30 years old bear in mind yesterday i put on a dress for my party that i bought and it was quite revealing, but it was cute. Right. And I showed my mom, she's like, what do you think? She was like, if that's what you want to wear. I was like, what do you mean if that's what I want to wear? Aww. And she was like, it's it's a lot, Jessica. It's a lot. And then I was like, you don't think I should wear it? She was like, no. And Aww. I took it off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because that's, you know, again, that's the people pleaser in me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, living with someone else, I'm still, I'm not opposed. But yeah. It would depend on the fallout, really. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I understand, like, because you know, you have like your religion, the you know, the religious yeah. traditional values. For me, I mean, I'm like unconventional as fuck, so I'm right. like, 
I, I I'm like pro like living with someone first before you get married because especially like when me and Brian moved in together, you know, and I mean, your mom is right in a sense of like, if you love each other, like you'll make it work. Like 1000% yeah. like I'd, I'd back that up. But like, I don't know, but sometimes it's just like, you don't know the person yeah. until you like L- live, live with, with them. them. And like, 100%. you could have fallen in love with the idea of them. And how do you know who they really exactly. are? Exactly. And until like you live with each other. And so, you know, with Brian, when we first moved in together, like it honestly was pretty tough. Like it wasn't, and because I loved him, obviously I like made it work and like we like fought through some things, but it's really tough because it's like, he, you know, you're meshing two adult lives that are fully formed in yeah. their habits. Yeah. And then you come together and it's like having to like create like a flow, a house flow of how things go, right, you know? Right, right. And you guys are very different. In the and way we're that very you live. different yeah. in the way that we live. And so it was like, and we're also like not traditional. Like right. we're not, I'm not like a housewife. Like I'm not, okay, I'm the woman. Let me take this over. You're the guy. You take this over. Right. It's just like, we, you know, like had to kind of customize what that looks like for our relationship. Right. And like, you know, and like, we've had like fights where we're like screaming at each other. Like we were screaming, you know? And so, and that doesn't happen often. I think that was like one time, but like it just, it gets like really heated. And sometimes you really, you see who like the person is. And I've said this before on the pod too. It's just, I've seen a lot of, I I know a lot of my girlfriends, I know a lot of just girls in general, like, oh my God, I can't wait to get married. Like, I can't wait. wait." I've seen young marriages. Marriage, I've seen like, I'm not just saying I've seen, I've seen like ha- the in in real time how yeah. hard marriages oh, are yeah. with you, especially with um, well, you don't know yourself. Oh, oh, oh! Like marriage is not easy, and that's why I'm yeah, I want to get married. Yeah, I want a man, I, but I'm just not in a rush because I already know it's not easy. Why would I make right. it not be? Why would I go into a situation that I already know is not easy with someone that I'm already that I'm also questioning? You know, exactly. It's just unnecessary stress. A thousand percent, I agree. Cause like, yeah, and but you know, like moving in with Brian also because we've like overcome a lot of things so far, and like because I've seen like him, you know, his every day and how yeah, and vice Got versa, your rhythm, yeah, yeah. That I'm like it actually like moving in with him, I I fell even more in love with him, mm. like than I did like when we you know first started dating like if anything like i'm more in love with him now than i was like in the honeymoon phase yeah, or whatever wow. like i feel like it's like this slow going back going back to like the slow love you know what i mean it's like yeah you were talking about getting pregnant a moment ago i know i'm like i was pregnant because i'm like and i knew i mean i knew from the beginning that he was the, the one, one i was gonna do that with but it doesn't it doesn't mean that like my feelings or like my lifestyle was ready for that you right. know it was just kind of like having to like get there and see if like okay is my like prediction accurate right you know? like i'm not gonna just like go off of just that and be like okay like i'm right it is right that, but because i'm i want to be sure yeah you know and so but yeah but living with him for sure made me love him and he even said it too he's like i feel like you like love me more and i was like i do i'm so <laughs> obsessed with you so it's it's Aww. just like you know slow love slow love hashtag like, slow love i like hashtag i want love. fast love at this age slow love ain't gonna work for me <laughs> look you're still young what do you mean at this age you're because only no, I mean, 30 it's not necessarily about the the, the but me and Brian slow love like what we're two and a half three years in like it's but it's not about the numeric part of it it's just like at this actually, okay let me rephrase not at this age but at this stage in my life okay. I want something that's sure I want to, I'm not saying I want to be like married and like meet someone and get married within a month or two but what I'm saying is I just want to be in I want someone to meet me, someone to be like, yep, you're my, that this is the one. I want me to be able to be like, uh, I don't know. And then, <laughs> you know. This dra- sounds like how uh, me and Brian uh, were, Oh, though. yeah, for sure. I do so want, slow I want love, drama, like- drama, drama, drama a little bit. Oh, but I love you. And then it's <laughs> like, drama. let's love each other, marriage, yeah. babies. I mean, that's, I mean, that's slow love because, I mean, like, 
it like you you said it just like i mean we we knew immediately it was like each other and that's yeah, what it was like that's what i'm we're gonna for. we're gonna be intentional yeah. but we're also going to embrace i think the slow love part is like we knew immediately that like again we were compatible but we were taking like every step of our like every phase of our relationship like slowly yeah you know and that's why my mom was so i like can't stand my mom because she's always like when are you getting engaged has he proposed yet and i'm just like dude like i think she was like asking ever since i moved in and i was like let's just i want to embrace like just living together yeah first and like be in this moment with him and like be in this phase without having to like rush because we know we're gonna get there that's what we're working towards so i think it's like important to like embrace each stage as is right and like work through that and like not try to be so like jumping to the future i might uh, my grandma it reminds me of my my grandma she's staying with me you saw her yesterday yeah i can i just say shout out to your grandma like she's so cute she's you as a grandma like (laughs) when you like are there that's you that's probably very true yeah Um, personality wise look wise everything (laughs) like she is she is you she's asked me three or four times so where when are you getting married yeah like and she's like when are you getting married which are I you getting like, married before I you die? Uh, before I die, and I'm just like, oh my god! Now that is a different yeah. kind of pressure. Is that that? that is, yeah. I'm just like, no. My mom says all the time. She's like, what if I like die? And I'm like, it's like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? Impr-? And I was right. like, you know what, grandma? I'm gonna get married before you die. That's yeah. That I will do. To yeah. Who I don't. She was like, so when are you getting married? I was like, I need to find a man first. Right. Girl. Like, hold up. <laughs> I don't know. People. yeah i know i think they just you know it's it's fine i mean i i like don't agree with like trying to like ask and rush you know but I'm it's just gonna, yeah, but I'm it's also just like it. a generational thing of it's course just like, I'm, I'm, it's my grandma she's, she's in her just, 80s yeah. she's jamaican yeah she, she doesn't know like you know she, yeah. she knows it's just it's the generation it's just the generation sure. so i obviously don't take any offense to it but i'm just like yeah. on, i was told her i was like i'm not gonna get into a marriage and just to say that i'm married I would rather be single. Yeah, because you would have gotten and married I'll move to next some random you and Brian. person. Right. And we can be a happy family. I know. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah. I loved when Brian would stay with us. I know. Us and he would cook. Love that for us. I know. Love that for us. So anyways, so we, had a, we, we went on a tangent, mm-hmm. but hopefully that helps. So, Zoe. Zoe, so hope Tusky. that helps. <laughs> So we hope that Anyone helps. who knows who Zot- Zotowski is yeah. gets gets fucking points. <laughs> Shit. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Want to do one more story? Yeah, let's do one more. Let's do it. Let's do an email. Let's, we could do like a cute one. Oh. We mentioned people pleasing, so I feel like this might be a good one. Hey, Steph and friends. I love you all. Mondays are literally my favorite days Aww. just to listen. HK and Rose, I love you so much. Oh, sorry, baby. Ah. <laughs> and Jess! It's okay. I haven't been on the pod in so long. Yeah. Um, and I also, I'm obsessed with HK and Rose. So yeah. Ditto. Yeah, ditto. Um, I'm still digesting everything, but I need to get this out. So I got burned by a situationship and have been taking time to heal. I've told my friends I'm currently in my nun era. <laughs> Not the nun era. What? Nun era? I love this era for you, sir. Yeah, I was like, just because the right person to read this email with, because nun era for (laughs) sure. I have no energy for dating or getting to know new people. During my nun era, oh my God, she's really sticking with this. Nun era? (laughs) I'm currently in my nun era. I have no energy for dating. During my nun era, I decided to hang out with an old friend. We grew up together in junior high and high school. We went on a few dates after we graduated, but it never went anywhere. We've gone years with no contact and and reach out from time to time. So we hung out a few times. Him being a big Star Wars nerd, we decided to watch them all since all watch them all since I've never seen them. You better than me, girl. (laughs) You better than me, girl. You must like him. Right. I was going to say, because that's a lot of movies. Nah, bro. I'll be like, Godspeed. (laughs) Godspeed. Like, no way. Um, And no shame to Star Wars. It's just, like, not not my thing. thing. Um, (laughs) And I watch it a lot because my brother is a Star Wars nerd. So, 
I think he's even had like tattooed on him. Oh wow. Anyways, we decided to watch two of them. Okay, she wants two of them. Us being tired, he offered for me to stay over. He did offer to take the couch or vice versa. I ended up taking the bed and I told him we could sleep in the same bed. Hey, girl. Mm, there's era. flies everywhere. This nut era is different. Right? This nut era. I felt bad and didn't want to put him out and I was far too tired to drive home. We laid down. We Sorry. We laid down clothes on and I grabbed a separate blanket. That's, that's nut era for sure. Um, he... Lay down, eventually started grabbing me, Ooh. making sexual remarks, Ooh. and started to put on so much pressure. Ooh. He even mentioned sad. being respectful the week before, but this week was different because of his blue balls. You all, oh, he can't hell. Have, he can't have blue balls now. Uh, okay, let's see where this goes. I gave him, I gave, I gave him no ideas anything would happen. He also apologized for being so pushy and didn't mean to, but continued. Oh, girl. But this, this is it's giving teet, teet, teet. You're close to the line. Teet, right. Teet, teet, teet. Close to the line. You're close to the line. No. Um, also saying he hoped I wouldn't get my hopes up for something to happen between us. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, he also, okay, so let me read this. He also apologized for being so pushy and didn't mean to, mean to, but continued. Also saying he hoped I wouldn't get my hopes up for something to happen between us. Okay. He put so much pressure that I eventually gave in. <gasps> I'm currently trying I, to heal really past to trauma already, and it leaves me so confused on what happened or how to process this. I guess I would just like your input. Oh, we're both Sag, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> Love you so much. So, What's her name? Um, She wants to say anonymous. Fran. I'm going to call you Fran. Fran, yeah. Fran, 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 Fran. Honestly... I'll wait till this fire truck goes. But I can relate to friend so much because I'm a people pleaser. Mm. And so it, there are situations where you're, you don't want to do anything, but right. because you want to, you don't want to disappoint subconsciously, so like, let me just do it. And it is, Posh, it is a responsibility of the guy to say, and thank God, I, I do also think that with this new Me Too era kind of thing happening, I think from the guys I've been with, they're a lot more, they ask a lot more questions. Uh, are you comfortable? Are you okay? Is this okay? And if I say stop, even if it's like, stop, you know, people yeah. don't stop, but don't really stop. Yeah. They, they, they actually do stop and say, you know, and so I do think that's one good thing that has come out of it. However, I would say back when I was in college, there wasn't much of that. It was very much like, even if I said I didn't want to, they would do what this guy did, which is not is not appropriate. If I say I, if there, if I'm putting on a separate blanket, if I have all my clothes on, don't, and if I'm not showing you any vibes that I want anything to happen. Wait for me, the woman, to initiate something because, and then ask if that's, and even if you do, like, kind of push up on me, mm-hmm. ask if it's okay, you know? Right. No, yeah, 1,000%. Like, I, it's sad, like, like, how common it is, yeah. you know? And it's it sucks because this is recent, and even though with the whole Me Too movement, it's, like, a clearly like, like still there's still like he, yeah there's still things like this like happening and it's just like god it's fucking fly and it it's just sad and i just think that like it, it kind of triggered me a little bit because yeah. there was like this this you know one dude his name is marcelo i'll decide later if i want to beep it out or not but like i remember he like came over and i'm like we're getting ready to go to like a party or whatever and no one was home it was just us two and i'm like so i like drunkenly hooked up with them the night before and i like regretted it and so the next day it was like during the day we're going to like a birthday party and he said he would come over and like and we'd like go together and so i soon i knew he was coming over and i I, like, didn't want to hook up with him again or give him the sign right. that, like, I was, like, not down. 
And I like remember taking like my curling iron, my makeup, like to the living room. And so I was getting ready there. So when he came over, he was like not trying to think that I was like trying to do anything. But he kept trying to convince me to go to the room. Yeah, no. And just kept pushing and pushing. And eventually I just gave in because I was just like, again, people pleaser. Yeah. Right? Because we're like, um, just trying not to like make things awkward or we don't know what's gonna happen if we right. keep if we like stand up for ourselves. And so then we eventually like hooked up and it was just like afterwards like I just felt and and then so when we were done, he's like, Oh and he like leaves and doesn't end up going with me to the party. Oh wow. So he just came over. So yeah. Yeah. And so it just like was really fucked up. So, and I think that I've really carried guilt for so long because of it. Cause I was like, I should have done this better. I should have done that. And like, and it's also this kind of thing of like, was it, I'm going to say the word trigger warning. It was it rape or not. Right. If I like consented almost, yeah. but like I was manipulated. Right. You know? And so, well, here's the thing. This might be controversial, but I think that though we were manipulated, although in this situation we are manipulated, it's still a decision that we make. Right. And I think it is a responsibility for uh, us women to have a strong no. Like, if you don't want to do anything yeah well if we after you say no and then they proceed that's a whole different obviously whole right different thing well I, I well i kept telling my dude like no i don't want to go in there no i don't want to go we, in there but eventually the people yeah. because it's a us thing it's the people pleaser in us that yeah. makes us go you know right and so obviously we've evolved from that um i don't give i don't care if people please or not i'm not right I'm, I'm still a people pleaser in certain aspects but when it comes to that i i'm just like it, it just wouldn't happen today. Right. The old Jessica is even the first time I had, that was my first sexual experience. Like the first right. time I had sex, I was like, I didn't really want to do it. But then it was like, I, I don't want to do it. But then he would touch me and then I'd be like, I still don't want to do it. And then it's like, well, I, then, you know, and then it's just like, I guess we're doing it. Yeah. You know? And so it is very difficult to, to figure out if that's the R word or not. Right. I mean, I don't I, like, if you, it, I mean, I don't think, oh God, this fucking fly is like trying to like be in the shot. Um, I think I'm still trying to understand what the definition is because I think sexual assault could look in, it different ways, look in different yeah. ways. There's very, there's layers of how it looks like. It's not just like drag me to the forest and like right, right, pin right, me right, down, course, whatever, yeah. where I'm like screaming no, like. I think it there it's a form of some sort of like abuse. Yeah. You know? Um but and I'm sorry that that happened yes, to you and I think there's really so like sorry. nothing like I can say because your feelings are valid especially I know the feeling of like I don't want to do that, you know, like I really again in my nun it, era it's like such just a conflicting trying to feeling. Yeah, like but I just don't want you to carry any shame. Right. Like that's yes. the thing is like just like don't carry any shame. Don't think that like I could have done this differently or could have done this differently or don't you know, like don't try to 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 make yourself feel like you're not worthy yeah. because of a situation. I think that was something that like for me, it took me a really long time to, like, comprehend, like, what happened that one time with that guy. Mm. And, like, again, because it wasn't, it wasn't the R word. But right. yet, why do I feel, feel violated? Yes. So, and I think I carried shame yes. for so much longer than I wish I did. Mm -hmm. And I wish someone would have told me, like, no, like. It's and one, you're not al you're not alone. It's an experience. Yeah, I think you're not. I think if I had someone to t talk to about it and them tell me, "Girl, I've been through this before," yeah, it, I may have been able to process it a bit differently. Yeah, and so that's what I will say to you. You're not alone. It's not a you thing. Um, it's definitely something. If anything, uh, I would say it's a lesson we learn about ourselves. And 
from those experiences and it hasn't just been one it's been multiple and because it's been multiple yeah one of the few (laughs) i had to learn okay this i'm not good in positions like this how what are ways that i can not put myself in those decisions because hey if i'm going if i know i'm naturally a people pleaser when it sexually is like then i have to make active decisions not to to try my best not to put myself in those situations you know what i'm saying yeah and so it's kind of uh, but again that's just something you you learn learn. because you're you're never gonna learn without going you have faith in people to not do that yeah again going to back to the beginning of the episode we're like we really like trust people we have this faith and they like kind of screw us over and it's like those one it's just like those unfortunate events that happen in our lives where it's like you had to learn the hard way yes and you know and i never want to say like I, and I and, and this is not even putting the blame on oh, you at all because like it's like you should you should go about your life yeah. feeling like you're not this is not going to happen to you like we really deserve that you know and so but it's like the reality we, hits, we don't yeah we don't live in a perfect world yeah and we have to protect ourselves ourselves and so again like knowing like oh wait I am a people pleaser and it's really hard for me to be in this position right. like it, it's hard for me to stand up for myself in this like right situation again yeah like don't try your best to like you know be more cautious yeah of like what you're doing yeah. and i think that just it does take time and unfortunately sometimes it takes trauma yeah it does to like realize that and i think just use it as like to 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 put it into like survival mode mm. and to be like stronger and more aware of like you know like of yourself and what you know you're capable of like yeah just pleasing people that right. don't deserve it and this doesn't take away from your non error you're still yeah in, because and i think that's one of the things is when you go through that you feel like it um makes everything else that you've been working towards no longer valid or true it's like oh well, yeah. i'm obviously no longer in my non error i don't i don't qual i don't deserve my non error because i can't even make right decisions i can't right. even yeah um you know not even go through with something like look at me like i'm the mess like i feel like those are the thoughts that like i'm not as strong i'm not as strong enough person yeah like and and those are the the negative thoughts that and i wouldn't even say demonic thoughts but i'm more spiritual but those are the thoughts i feel like are put in our minds to try and distract us from what our mission is yeah Um, because for me it's when we all have a mission we all have things we're working towards and sometimes there are things that are trying to distract us from reaching those goals yeah and so i would not don't and i think we get distracted by those things those that that negative voice in our head that we we disqualify ourselves from those goals we don't feel like we're worthy of it so we kind of be like well i'm not going to do it anymore so i feel like you should just don't let that that's one that situation distracts you from where you are going towards it was something that happened it was traumatic and uncomfortable and uncomfortable and you may not be able to define it and that it's okay um and it's okay to feel the way you feel um you're entitled to that and that is again just something you it's a lesson and you can only go it's only up from here at this right. point you know and I'm all, if i'm also thinking like logistically like I, I i again i was like i'm laughing at like the nun era thing maybe i shouldn't say this i'm like the catholic church <laughs> carries a lot of shame with sex okay and so like i, I guess going back to just like just following up with like what she said like what Jess just said and I agree with everything but also like yeah like don't carry shame like don't just like I'm you know because that was something that I struggled with Mm. because I grew up in like a catholic church and like was really felt shamed for being like just a sexual being you know like and don't just I hope you don't carry that with you um and just know that like this is 
a learning curve that like the world is kind of a sick place so you kind of have to do what you can right to survive in it to serve to survive it like i mean it sucks because we really should be living our lives and watching star wars Wars, with the guy we're interested in and like you know and and or not interested in yeah or not without without feeling like oh my gosh but again we don't we don't know and so like if you're in your if you want to continue to be in your non-era again just making maybe that's just not a situation that you want to put yourself in again, yeah you know and also like i'm gonna talk to the guys out there to the predators 100%. out there like if or to anyone like man or woman like if you are getting intimate with someone and you feel like okay they're in a separate blanket they're 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 telling you like they're they're uncomfortable they rather you know like i mean i guess it's like he kind of tried in the beginning but yet like he, she then followed with him like he kept pushing it's like i almost feel like he just tried to look like he didn't want you cared about consent like trying to make you comfortable but then when it came to like when he's horny he couldn't control it because of blue balls like at that point blue balls is not a motherfucking excuse so like and in the future i would have said well if you can't sleep next to me without this i'll go Go to the cu- I'll go to the couch. I'll sleep right. on the couch. Let me right. go to sleep on the couch. Right. I think those are the kind of decisions that we have to make. It's just like, well, obviously you can't control yourself, so let me take myself out of this situation right. and go to the couch and sit with myself. Like, your blue balls is not worth traumatizing someone else's experience. You should be able to control yourself. You're control an, yourself. You're an adult. You're an actual like, an adult. D- it's, it's disgusting. It's like, you know, and I feel bad that the first half we're, like, telling her, like, okay, you know, which is, like, fair, unfortunately, where we're like, okay, we know better not put yourself in these situations, but I just have to, like, you know, also and, and remind I, the other, other people on the other side. Course. It's like, you shouldn't put anyone in that situation. And if you're fucking horny and you can't control yourself, then... Don't invite some girl over and she and like or you just learn how to have respect. It's like it, read the fucking room. And here's the thing. I think while it would be great for us to sit here and discuss what the guy shouldn't do, which we have done, um, what we are essentially because I, I feel like people are going to be like, well, why is it the girl's responsibility? Da, 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 why is the which I agree with? Why is it the girl's responsibility? However. For me, when it comes to women, I, I safety is first. Yeah. And so if we have the world is not where we want it to be. Let's just that is just what it is. It's not yeah. going to change in the next five to ten business days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what? The there's advice, no Amazon. There's not like, Amazon Prime. Prime two days. Pl- right, deli- no, no, no. So <laughs> what we're saying is necessarily what should happen in society. But what we're saying is to answer a friend's question in this moment and the reality, um, and the of, reality of what where we are right now your safety to me is more important than this guy not knowing how to act as a human being and i'm telling her we're telling her like what to do to not put to to, to prevent yourself from being uncomfortable and yeah you know, and what, well from what we've learned from out because we've been through it we know it sucks we know the other guy should have w- should have would have could have but this is the yeah. best thing we can say for you that you, an actionable advice you can take today and use today. Use today, yeah, yeah, for sure. But anyone with yeah. balls, man. Any, any, I mean, women could also be predators. Anyone like consent is like uh-huh. is, uh, communication is, is you can never over communicate, and sometimes it's not sex. Especially, I would say, especially if you're not sexually. It, it's, you don't have a sexual uh, past with the person. Over communication. This is for the guys mainly. Yeah. Over communication is better than no, no communication or under communication. Are you okay with this? Is this okay? Are you comfortable? Um, can I touch you here? Those are the. Th- and if you're it's not, not sure, if, if you're not <laughs> sure, it's better not to do something. Exactly. If you're not sure, it's just better not to touch them. If they're not, uh, if the woman. And also, and if you don't want to have that uncomfortable question, um, uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversation, then just wait for her to initiate. You know, yeah. if yeah. she initiates, and even if she does initiate and she says no in the middle of initiating, it's still yeah. no. But yeah, well, yeah. Sometimes it's okay to follow the woman's lead, espe- especially when it comes to sexually speaking. Exactly. Exactly. Well, 
that was amazing. I mean, not amazing because that all of that sucks, but it's also like this is an amazing conversation to have because it's like, it's it's like it's it's an everyday thing that unfortunately we're like, wait, we have one, two, three, four, five experiences with that. That too is many. like well, it's too it's many, way yeah. too many, way too fucking many, especially like. Especially when you're drinking, yeah. but that's a whole other well, thing too. Other thing. <laughs> because that's a lot of it was really a lot of it was alcohol induced, uh, alcohol yeah. induced. So, but I mean, the, this situation it and it's, it and it's not only for the girl's safety, but for the guy's safety. Like you could, my nigga, you can go to jail. You can go to jail. That could you could be on the sex registry for years to come. Mm-hmm. How are you going to explain that to your kids? How are mm-hmm. you going to explain that to someone that your wife to be your someone? How are you going to explain to your family that you're on a sex registry? Like your name is there for yeah. 10, 15 years. So it's not only for and the girls um safety, but it's also to protect the guys from a lifelong for fucking up your life. Yeah. Like, for, don't fuck up your life. Just because you couldn't control your blue balls, you know? Right. It's like, like when I got my DUI, it's just like, just because you drank, girl. Like, right. you know, they, yeah. those are the thoughts that, like, you just didn't have. It just, that small moment, that small decision has such a lifelong. And that's the thing, like, think about the repercussions of what things could be before you do them. It right. would change everything. Yeah, exactly. And just like have compassion have for compassion, others. Yeah, and empathy for sure. But some people just don't. But trash, trash. Yeah. Anyways, plug yourself, Jessica Clark MBA. Ah, Jessica Clark MBA. My Instagram is j dot clark underscore clark with an e c l a r k e. And um, catch me if you can. Yeah, and then follow me, Stephanie Megan, or go to Broco Therapy dot com so, all I'm, that shit is there and uh sign up for patreon and sign up for patreon so we can get a studio yeah so we get a studio and we could eat and share and share, share with your friends family yeah. and loved ones and also like tag me you know because i'm doing batch recordings sometimes it takes forever when like recordings come out i respond to an email like as soon as i get home like i'm clipping that part that we we're speaking for zoe and i'm putting it on patreon like immediately so she'll get like Maybe you know i try response. to get like an immediate response um so yeah so you guys like it's a better way to communicate with me and to help support the show yes all right love y'all love bye. you bye Girl, 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 gir